Hey, welcome back to Aaron's 1972.510. Today we're going to finish painting as best as we can. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll all be one color. That's what we're going for. All one color. So, how should we do this? Well, first we will go ahead and take off this rear bumper and the lights. So, swinging around. Oh, hey, welcome. Um, so, since you're there, these are 16 millimeter bolts that hold off these parts of the bumper. So we're going to go ahead and remove it. So these are 16 millimeters and pretty easy to break loose. But you do have to keep the bolt or nuts from spinning on the back. Or the ball not hit you right in the face. One. Uh, pro tip also, get both sides almost completely loose before taking off some of the final bolts so that way you don't have to worry about it falling down or wrenching a part on the rear panel here. Go to the other side. All right, one of the last two. We'll break it loose. Now you see what we're working with here. Notice that this has been bent a little bit, so we'll go ahead and bring that back out. Perfect. Okay, now we'll go ahead and get this clean and we will go ahead and start with the uh, preparation for paint. Again, I'm not really super concerned about any of this. Uh, I will have to clean up some of this. Then I'll have to take these out again and this off. So, shall we? Wow, watching me remove bolts is somewhat boring, so I bet you're glad that we're switching over to time lapse. The taillights are removed uh, just by removing the small 8mm nuts that are holding on the housings, and then I removed the gasket material around the lights. I will be replacing those, and I did order those online. But taking off all of the lights was a fairly easy thing to do, especially since I had already done it before and they hadn't been on the back on the car very long. Once I get all that done, I start really looking at the back panel because I want to get it all cleaned up so that way I can, you know, paint the car. So now the back of the car is stripped down. I'll go ahead and have to clean all these surfaces. Some of them I've already sort of scrubbed down in the past, but I can spot little things that probably need to be redone. Like there's like, it almost is like you got tape, tape over it. I don't know. So I'll clean up all that. I'm gonna clean up this. And there's a line from a Batman movie that says, if you live long enough, you might see yourself become the villain or something like that. I did not spot this and replace it. Like I should have when I was working on this part of the car well over a year ago. So, I've got this wonderful spot here that is goo, crap, just not great. So, I've got to figure out sort of how I'm going to, what I'm going to do here in this corner, whether I'm going to go ahead and do the right thing and fix it or not. So, The problem is, is I already painted the inside of the trunk and it actually looks nice in the trunk. So anyway, 
let's go ahead and take a scuff wheel to this and get rid of a lot of this paint. I'm gonna leave, I don't know, like I'm gonna scuff to like here and maybe around here, but I'm not gonna remove all of this paint. And if I will like the remove this portion just to get myself a smooth surface, I think that's what the answer is. Anyway, all right, let me get to it. All right, I'm not going to do much voiceover in this portion of the video, but I will say that I am going to overlay some new music. Uh, go check out his SoundCloud. Uh, this is a buddy of mine who I really like his guitar work, and he graciously allowed me to let him use or let me use his music. So enjoy. Now that I have all of the surfaces somewhat prepped, I'll go ahead and start trimming back on this hole and sort of see where it leads to before creating a new patch panel for it. Maybe hey, repair one more rust spot for old time's sake. die. All right, I've got this piece cut out. I'll go ahead and cut out a piece, weld it in. <clears throat> this GoPro doesn't do well in direct sunlight, so I've got you hidden, but you're down a little bit lower. <laughs> Let's go ahead and leave that one. Uh, but you can see the hole that I've cut uh, for the new piece. Now we're going to go ahead and make the new template. I've got some metals up on the up on the workbench. So I'll cut out for this. But what we'll do is we'll just start set down like this. Make sure it's fully in there. I'm 
Now we'll just set this down on the piece of metal, do a rough cut of it, and then uh, we will uh, weld it into the car. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Seems like no matter how much I try, this bench is always so dirty. It's my own fault, I know. Let's see if I can cut this out before I go get out of I'm gonna go attempt to just sort of set it in the car and see what it looks like. It should be slightly over large for the piece. So. Okay. Looks like this corner is pretty good. Um, but it is too long. Doesn't help that it's got some bins in it. They're not in the original panel. Okay, so looking at this, we've got too wide across the board and it needs to be angled slightly to fit into this corner. So looks like we need, just like it sort of shows, we need to trim. We can run the, and see how this is too long. Let's go ahead and run the um, finger sander and sort of get these closer to the spot that they're supposed to be. So this finger sander has become one of my favorite tools working on the car and on these little things like this. But man, do I dislike when those sanding belts break which they do fairly frequently, especially when you're pushing too hard on it. So this is me just continually adjusting the piece a small bit by a small bit, and then going and testing it out in the car. All right, so I don't want to remove the piece. You can see it sticks out just a tiny bit here. It's good right here. So I'm gonna to try to get a couple tacks, uh, one here on the top, one here on the bottom, and then another one right here. And then I'm going to use a hammer and dolly to sort of flatten these two pieces to each other. I think I'm, I think I'm searching, or searching for perfection when I think good enough is going to have to be good enough. Uh, I'm using the TIG torch today mainly because I don't want to have to get out the MIG stuff and change all my bottles around and things like that. Yeah, that was a mistake. So here's hoping that it goes okay. getting a little bit of wiggle or I can get it locked in place and I'm gonna have to find a better way to clamp it so I can actually get it set still. Don't ask why I didn't just use these in the first place. Start here, sort of work up.
Oh my gosh. Okay, so sometimes it's easier just to grab the MIG and do things. So I got this side all MIGged up. Got the got this side all MIGged up. Then I went ahead and sanded it down. There's some dings and dents here that honestly I don't even think are from the welding. I think they're from other things. So I need to fill that in with a little bit of Bondo. Uh, but before I go and start doing that stuff, I remembered I have these two holes that I need to fill. So I'm gonna try to fill these real quick. I've got a copper plate behind here to sort of dissipate heat. I just want to real quick just fill these in. So that's what I'm going to do, and then I'll sand them down. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, it wasn't until later that I learned that you the holes see. drilled in my back panel were actually in the wrong spot for the yeah, you should 510 be able to see emblem. Right here. Yep, 14 volts, 157 inches per minute. That's what I'm working on. And I just realized that I forgot earlier to uh, turn off the gas, so it should still be on. This one looks like it's got some contaminants on it, so hopefully it works pretty well. Now we'll go ahead and use the finger sander to take off these high spots here. Self-etching primer on this bad boy. Let's see what we're working with. GoPro, stop recording. I ended up just using the stud to sort of mark a little hole so that way I could drill out for the rear tail lens. Thanks for watching my video on paint drying. All right, so I've tossed a little bit of um, primer here just to sort of see what I'm working with. Um, I outlined where the outside of the tail light is going to be, and now I can see some of the high spots from the welds that I've done. So I'm gonna actually go back through and try to clean up some of this. I also see some dings right here that I can see if I can try to sort of pop out and smooth out. Um, I'm less concerned, honestly. I'm gonna try to smooth this out a little bit better. And then after I do that, I'm just gonna use some Bondo and try to clean it up. But like these high spots, I think I can get, um, and I'm gonna try to use, realistically, it's a Scotch Bite Bright Pad, but the goal is to try to blend this down um, and so I'm going to use a chisel tip marker here and sort of go like this all around it. And then use a light touch with the Scotch Bright pad. And it should take all this top part off real quick. And then when it starts taking off everything, I think we'll know that we're, we're done. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, We'll see. Honestly, I'll probably have to switch to the um, to the sandpaper. Uh, but my orbital sander gave up the ghost a while back, and so I'm I'm having some issues, and I don't want to use the big giant, you know, three and a half inch or four and a half inch angle grinder. So I'll go ahead and switch you into time lapse mode, and we'll uh, come back and talk to you after. Hope you're enjoying so far. GoPro, stop recording.
found a few pinholes along the way, so I went ahead and filled them in with the MIG, and then I used the cutoff wheel to be very surgical in my removal of the welding. And then once I got done with that, I went back through with the finger sander to sort of spread out and try to even out the sanding I did on this back panel. This back panel is far from perfect and I was definitely getting some fatigue as I was working on this, but this back panel is now at least one solid metal piece versus a whole bunch of other things. And you can just see I am chasing the rust here in this back panel. It kept running away from me because the metal was so thin. Uh, largely because I had let it get so thin as I sanded it down, which is pretty unacceptable, but that's what you got to do, right, as you're learning. I figured out, oh man, I can't I can't keep chasing that, so um, got some thicker metal in and welded it up and got the panel all closed off, which is what you see me wrestling here right now. Also, as I'm editing this video, I realized once I got done with this portion, I just shut down the camera for the day and moved on. So, no little wrap up about this portion. The next portion of the video is a couple days later. I remember I decided that I just didn't want to show you guys sanding and priming and sanding and priming. So I did that a couple more times on the back panel as well as on these side panels, trying to get everything correct. Uh, stepping up just different sizes of grits to make for sure that the panel was smooth before I started painting. I struggled quite a bit to get the paint to be as glossy as I wanted it to be. I think I put too much hardener in it, uh, which caused some problems. Um, but this paint's a couple years old, and I was really wanting to get the car done. So you see me here mixing up more paint. Uh, but it is what it is, and the car is all now one color. I'm very excited happy with the way that it turned out it's not perfect but it actually does look pretty decent and most people don't actually notice that it's multiple colors until I tell them and then they notice right away This paint doesn't have to be perfect because there's no way I could make it perfect. Uh, but as we move to the next part of the video, let's see if I can get you right on the edge here if you can see it. So I've already gone at this with like a wet sand 220 or 240 grit. And then I went over the top of that with 1200 grit, all wet sanding just to smooth the paint out before I eventually go over it with like a polishing compound, cutting compound, to sort of smooth it all out. Um, the, the paint just was not coming out of the gun very clean, and it was orange peeling, drying right before, even before it hit the surface, which I'm sure that someone out there who knows how to paint well knows why it did that. I am not that great of a painter. So I've already done this panel just a little bit. I can see some more spots where I've missed. So. First things first, sort of cut, knock down, smooth out all of these surfaces, then go over and wet sand them, then wet sand them again, then polish them. It's going to take a while, but I think the car's going to look pretty nice when I get done. So 
let's go ahead and start sanding. It is 1240 right now. Let's see what time it is when I get done with just this panel. one hour later and it is far from perfect but the paint is much more smooth and I need to go eat some lunch maybe take a break but it has been one exact exactly one hour it's 142 uh, so an hour and two minutes um, I think it's turning out pretty well and I think it'll look pretty good once I get it all back together it's not perfect but I mean it's an old Datsun it's all one color and yeah uh, I've got some 500 grit sandpaper and that I've been wet sanding and then I'm switching to 1200 grit realistically I really probably should be also be stepping it up to about um, 2000 grit sandpaper as a finishing a piece but there's lots of scratches and scuffs in the paint from me using the crappier sponge ones but it's all one color and it's smooth ish it'll polish up okay and just got this other fender to do we'll move on from there I want it to be a driver and we're about there so I'm just gonna keep moving forward I hope Well, it isn't pretty, but it is easy. Am I trying to crazy? That makes more sense. Um, I went ahead and sanded everything off camera because it's boring and I didn't want you to see how terrible I am at it. So now we're back to putting these vents on. Again, I am excited. Really going to try to turn this thing into a daily driver. And so. We're going to get put back together. That being said, I did order some gaskets for the rear tail lights, and so I'm just waiting for those to come in. But I will put the car back together. So we'll keep going on. Oh, and I have an interesting thing that I would like to show you as the last thing I put on to this car today, I hope. But we'll go over to the other side. I need to find these screws. Once I found the screws, it was pretty easy to put back on the fuel door and getting that lined up pretty close to perfect and then I went ahead and put on the trunk lid the trunk lid still to this day doesn't shut very easily but there is a pretty close gap around all the different sides which is realistically what I'm looking for and so I actually found that with the tail lights out I could reach in and adjust the nuts and bolts a little bit easier through the tail light panels which was pretty nice well I hope you think that my new emblem is as cool as I think it is um, I made it myself. Based it largely on the old one, although when I printed it, 
I didn't realize that the previous owner had broken the last one and so he had drilled holes in it and so I copied those same holes so I had to fill in the holes and place it here on the, and drill new holes but I think it's pretty neat now let's see if it'll actually sit flush against the car. It's not perfect. You could use a little bit of glue that would hold that there, but it's pretty cool. What do you think? Okay, so the car, the paint is not perfect. It's far from perfect. I'm never considered myself a great painter, but it's all one color. And so I gotta get the car back together. Um, I also got a, a tip for the exhaust so it doesn't come out right there. I want it to come out past there. So I'll f finalize that today. But first I'm gonna put on the bumper and we'll go from there. Hey, do you like my emblem? Check that out. I did that myself, for me. Um, it's not, again, still not perfect, but really like the way that it's looking. And the car is pretty much done. I think that means that I'll likely put together a, holy cow, I'm done with this car, at least for the time being video. I'm excited, guys. This is a long, long time coming. I just have to get the bumper back on, get it back together, and then, start driving it. I'm so happy. Since I've already taken the bumper on and off multiple times in this, I sped that up quite a bit. Uh, here's the tip that I placed on the car. Notice I flared it out uh, to be super cool. It's also stainless steel, so stainless steel onto mild still here. And I don't think it looks bad. I will say that it's not quite long enough and I still need to put on a longer tip still. The welds aren't super pretty, and I'll be honest, I, the more I look at it, the more I feel like I'm somewhat of a, uh, like, a poser by putting this uh, chrome tip on here like this, but uh, the that was the final part of the exhaust, so I will sort of clean it up, and get back in the car, and then I'll have the next part of the car done. Uh, I've got the side trim on, I have, I'm just waiting on the gasket to come in later, hopefully today, on the taillight panel, then the car is, is largely done, guys. Like, legitimately done. So, I am... It's taken almost three years to get to this point, or it's taken right around three years to get to this point. Granted, I was gone for about eight months of that. But, gosh, it's a good feeling. Uh, I'll be able to take this to a car show in Williams, Arizona, hopefully at the end of September. And right now, it is September the 3rd. So it's the first weekend in October is actually when it is. But thanks for watching up to this point in time. Let's go ahead and get this back in the car. GoPro, stop recording. The, the rear exhaust angles out with a hanger there. Uh, goes back in um, and then sort of loops around. This is where the rear suspension portions are and then slides through the cross member and slides into the front part of the exhaust. So it slides in as far as it'll go, rotate it up into the spot that it needs to be, hang it, and then you tighten the front of it. So we'll go ahead and go put it in. It's really 
just as simple as stabbing it in, rotating it around, and you've got it in the right spot. Luckily, most of this part can be done without the car up on jacks, which is something I appreciate. So, come on in. You can see how it clears the rear axle. You still got to get it slid into the right spot, which is not always the easiest thing to do. Alright, now that it's started, I can get back behind and sort of wedge it in. And then you want to, I have it where this, I rotate it, I rotate it, so first I want to bring it in as far as it'll go, right? And now I've rotated this muffler till it's parallel with the ground, because that's how I have it set up. And I've got this exhaust hanger. I'll be honest, I sort of cut into this exhaust hanger, maybe a little too close. So I'm going to have one in the back, just in case I need to replace it. See how long it, see how long it lasts, though. So now, you've got it as far forward as it'll go. Now i got to get it up on the hanger here. It just goes like that. And, voila. Now, I will secure it in the front, which is just a U-bolt. So let's go check it out. I'm getting the right camera angle underneath the car. It's not always easy, but I think this will work. So you see I took one maybe a bit too far off because it... I have it where I can reach it from the side of the car, which is beneficial. So I'm going to have it like this, where the parking brake goes underneath, but doesn't doesn't interfere with anything. And check that. Let me get up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, that is the exhaust done. That is the bumper put back on. That means that largely the car is done. I'm waiting again, waiting for something to come in the mail. So we'll cut back to that when the stuff gets here, and then I'll put on the taillights. Oh my gosh, guys. The new gaskets came. So here are the old ones. Here are the new ones. Sort of out of like an EV phone. Um, I'll put a link to uh, the gentleman that sells these um, down below. Uh, fellow Dots enthusiast. Uh, he did not pay me to put his link down below, but these are what I'm using. Let's go ahead and get it put in. Okie dokie. So this is the driver's side. Um, so look, it goes like that. Where this goes to the inside of the car, it goes to the outside. So if you look. We have a larger spot, gasket surface, if you will, to the outside of the car. So we will put the larger gasket surface to the outside of the car, like so. We'll slide it over the bolt holes here, making for sure that we don't have any twists in the material. Actually, like several twists, but we will undo them all. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, and go. Alright, so now that that's on, it's just as simple as sliding it through those holes and putting the 8mm bolts back on. 8mm uh, bolts are back over on the workbench, so we'll go ahead and get the other one set up too. Okay, that is for the passenger side. Now let's go ahead and get them put on. I went ahead and sped this all up. All you need to know is that you put all the nuts back on the posts and tighten them down to a reasonable level. That's it. Based on the amount of sponginess here, I don't know if I necessarily need a lock washer, but Out 
of this side. Go ahead and slot this into place. That's it. You're all done? I, I mean, I've got some small little projects, but like, I'll be driving the car to work next week. Oh, that's awesome. I got the, finally got the rear fenders painted. Um, uh, everything's back hooked up. That's awesome. I guess actually, like, technically, uh, I need to hook up the, the tail lights themselves. <laughs> there you go. Now that's done. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of little tiny things that I need to do. But other than that, it's running. Yeah. Yeah, I got the exhaust all got the exhaust all done, and that's awesome. Got that put on today. Bumper put back on. I think it's. I'm like legitimately like <laughs> I'm coming to grips with the fact that like okay this this project is done. There's there's. I would be happy if my project yeah. was done. I mean. I am too. I am definitely happy. It's just uh, I'm sure there. I'm sure I'll find some things like oh yeah I forgot I got to do that. Oh I forgot to do that. Yeah. But like. For the most part, I'm. You know, I get to put miles on it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And just like that, I think I'm done. I, yeah, there's a ton of little things to do around the car, but it's where I wanted it to be. It's a weird feeling being this close to done with a like a real long-term project. Guys, this is awesome. I mean, I gotta finish it's the interior, putting the interior back together, but that's largely just putting back the things that I've taken off of it here in the last few weeks. This is awesome. It's a great feeling. Also, sort of a what next feeling. I'm sure I'll figure something out. But I think that's all for today. Tune in next time where hopefully I'll give you a walk around and actually have it out on the road. And we can, uh, we can go through the full specs of the car. If you like to see, go ahead, comment, like, subscribe. It's a good feeling.